Hello again. Uh, this is the second lecture on OpenGL programming techniques. Uh, the previous one, which is only available or vertex uh, vertex buffer objects, uh, which are one of the most fundamental techniques in OpenGL programming. And today we will just uh, walk through a bunch of libraries. So we will start with a library known as GLM. Uh, GL stands for OpenGL, so graphics language, okay? And M stands for mathematics. This is a special library for mathematical operations in OpenGL. And in a moment I will explain why you need it. Uh, then I will very briefly uh, explain a little bit about FreeGlat and Glue, uh, because uh, these libraries were already introduced in our OpenGL Primer lecture. And then we will move on to Asymp, which is a, a popular library for loading 3D objects, and 3DGL, which is uh, my creation, uh, created specifically for this module, and this is the library which, uh, which is supposed to make your life easier in this module. So first of all, uh, GLM. GLM we will be using for mathematics and mathematics in OpenGL and generally graphics, 3D graphics is mostly about transformations, okay? So translations, rotations, uh, theoretical, 3D transformations we had last week, so you should be familiar with the con uh, concept. And first of all, you should understand that transformations are represented by what kind of a math mathematical structure? Who will tell me? For the letter M, a mathematical structure that can uh, uh, define the trans transformation, like translation, translation, rotation. Sorry? Matrix, matrix yes, matrix. All right, so GLM, it's not about uh, only about matrices, there is a lot of mathematical tools. So each time you need some math, so, uh, check GLM. It's a very good library. Uh, but uh, we will mostly, number one, we will uh, use it to define matrices, uh, create these matrices, combine these matrices. So combination of matrices is combination of translations. So if you watched uh, uh, observe the lecture last week, you should be familiar with this uh, concept of combining transformations. So if uh, you want to place an object, let's say uh, this object, which I'm not using because of some reason, but I should. Just give me a second. Okay. So if I want to introduce any object to a 3D scene, like, like this object, okay, I need, for example, to make a translation to provide it in the, uh, put it into the right position and specify rotation to get it uh, rotated, all right? And then if this is a spaceship, this thing, okay? and it flies. So this movement involves changing the position, changing the rotation, okay? Sometimes, not in case of a spaceship, but sometimes we, you will also want to scale objects. Uh, and these are all transformations. And the nice thing about the matrix is that one a single matrix can hold a combination of as many transformations as you want. OK, so nearly like uh, entire history of an object, all its translations, rotations, scalings can be just thrown into a single matrix, stored there and, uh, and used to uh, recreate the proper unique position of the object in the space. And one more key information, and there will be no more repetitions, uh, one more key information about it to get this universal matrix that can represent everything, translations, uh, rotations, uh, scale, also other uh, transformations we didn't discuss uh, at this uh, early stage of the module, like perspective, reflection, okay, whatever you want. Uh, 
to get it, you always need a matrix with a dimensionality greater by one from the space you are working with. So if we are working in 3D space, because this module is about 3D graphics, okay, uh, 3D graphics, you will need matrices that are 4D, four dimensional matrices. And the matrix looks like a array, a table. If it is 4D, it's four by four numbers, so it's 16 numbers. What is the meaning of these uh, numbers? I will send you back to the previous lecture about transformations and matrices. And uh, now, OpenGL initially provided a bunch of mathematical functions, uh, mostly to uh, make it possible to create matrices and define things like rotations, translations, scalings, and so on, so on, so on. Um, they are all now deprecated. Okay, this is based on OpenGL, very powerful deprecation model. Deprecation means uh, that they shouldn't be used anymore, and one day they will be removed from OpenGL. Maybe not. Maybe OpenGL will just disappear at some moment. Uh, there are chances because the Vulkan is uh, uh, getting more and more popular. But anyway, uh, if something is marked as deprecated, we will not use it. Okay. So instead, we'll use a library called GLM which is a de facto standard in both OpenGL and Vulkan. Okay, so you learn one library and you have double benefit from this. Um, it's uh, OpenGL Mathematics. You can find here a, a link. Link to this uh, library to download it, but uh, actually when you download your uh, workshop example today, you will get a copy of the GLM uh, all included. All right, so the first thing that I would like to talk about is the view matrix. View matrix defines the position of your camera. Okay, so defines where this camera is located, how it is oriented, so rotated in the space. And uh, it's uh, also nice because um, uh, all your navigation in the space. So when you use uh, a WASD uh, to walk, to move across the space, or you move mouse to look around, um, moving is translating the camera, looking around, it's uh, uh, rotating the camera, okay? And all these translations, so the current position of the camera, whatever you did, will always be stored in this matrix view which you can read uh, from uh, this description. It's a four-dimensional matrix. MAT4 four stands for four-dimensional matrix. Um, and uh, this is how we initialize this variable. A matrix view equals uh, uh, rotate. Okay, uh, e, we don't have to, to uh, discuss this rotator right now. I will tell you in a moment what, what, what it means. But uh, what's really important is this thing here, matrix view, uh, will be a look at transformation. Look at transformation is uh, quite a unique transformation. It's nothing that I uh, showed you last week, because in fact, look at is a combination of translation and rotation but it's a very handy way of specifying the transformation for the camera. Because look at, takes three vectors, okay? Vec3 is three dimensional vector. Uh, the first vector specifies the coordinates of your eye, okay? Or your camera. So in this diagram here, it's shown here. This is, these are the coordinates of the eye, okay? Then, there are coordinates of the object you are looking at. So you have to specify, okay, my camera is, sorry, my camera is uh, here. I will switch the camera even. Okay, so, the I coordinates are the coordinates of the camera. Now, if the camera looks at you, for example, okay, you, can you see yourself in the camera? 
Oh, no, no, no. OK. All right, it's you. All right. So it, it's looking at you, right? So to get this combination for the camera, I would have to provide coordinates of this point in the space, this here, and your position in the space, and we will get the camera that is located here and rotate it so that it's uh, pointing exactly at you. On it someone, someone else, for example, this would be the position if the add coordinates would be the coordinates of Tom, okay? And then we have the third vector, so-called up vector. Up vector are the coordinates of a, uh, if you imagine that uh, this camera would have an antenna here, okay? A vector pointing up, all right? If it is tilted like this, this vector will not be taken into consideration because uh, um, the at position, if, if I put it here and look at something close to the floor, it will be tilted. But this up vector is used to tilt the camera in this way, okay? So if you want to have a tilted camera like this, you have to specify uh, the up vector accordingly. So with these uh, three vectors, with these three vectors, you can specify everything that you need to provide the current position of the camera. Uh, all right. Now, an example of a code that you can use to display an object. Uh, to display an, an object, we will combine two different um, uh, matrices, the matrix view, so this is uh, uh, the perspective of the camera, and we will combine this uh, perspective of the camera, so the matrix view will combine with a sequence of uh, rotations and translations and scalings uh, for the object. It's a little bit confusing because uh, uh, the last line says something like camera.render, but the reason for having a camera here, it's not the best of my uh, possible choices here. It's just because uh, this is taken from a program which displays a 3D model of a camera on the screen. So this camera is in fact an object that you want to render. All right, and what it means? Uh, without looking into too many details, uh, um, we initialize the matrix M. This will be the matrix for the object, so so-called model matrix or model transformation matrix. <coughs> Sorry. So uh, we initialize it as the matrix view. So we will take into consideration position of the camera. And then we translate this object to a position uh, minus 300. We rotate it uh, by 180 degrees. Please note that the library expects radians. So if you want to specify a rotation in degrees, you have to convert. And there is a handy function, radians. Radians 180 give you uh, the 180 converted into radians. And you rotate it by the, uh, around the axis 0, 1, 0. 0, 1, 0, this is, the, this is the vector definition of the axis. 0, the first 0 means uh, it's not going to the right side, it's not going to the left side, okay? Then 1, it's the y coordinate, so the vector looks like this, okay? And then we have a 0, this means that it doesn't go to the forward, to the front or the rear of the screen. So this is a vector like this one, okay? Therefore, this is a rotation by 180 degrees around the, the y-axis. So that's the rotation like this. Okay, I'm rotated now 180 degrees around the axis y. I'm going back by rotating minus, minus 180 and I'm back here. Okay. And then also it uh, happens that this model has been provided by uh, whoever has created this model in a very big scale, okay? And uh, without application of any scale, we would end up with a huge, absolutely huge camera somewhere in the screen. So a very important hint here is when you compose a, a scene out of third-party 3D models, 3D objects, quite often you will have to apply a scale because either the stuff that you downloaded, purchased or whatever, 
is huge and you have to scale it down. Or it's teeny tiny because uh, 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 and you have to scale it up. And this is because there is no such thing like any kind of standard size in which uh, in which uh, uh, models should be uh, scaled, uh, should be prepared. All right. Uh, one unit in your fit is seen doesn't mean anything specific. It's not like uh, one meter equal one unit equals one meter or one centimeter. It's entirely up to you. OK, so each seen, even if I have a class, a number of students in this class, and uh, everyone is doing the same scene. The big chances are, and this is my experience, this is my practice, people just have the same scene uh, scaled in different uh, units, in different way, okay? Because it, it doesn't matter. Something, um, you know, if you have something huge, all right, but you uh, place the camera in a, a long distance from the huge object, and then you have the same object, but scale to something very, very small, but you also have a small camera just next to this object, you end up with the same image, okay? So you never know how big things really are, okay? Uh, size only has a sense in terms of relative size. One object is twice as big as the other object, but absolute size doesn't matter in 3D graphics, unless you have some specific, uh, specific ideas about it. Uh, engines in which uh, units uh, are meaningful, okay? But OpenGL doesn't specify what a uh, single unit would uh, ever mean. Let's have a closer look at this uh, uh, at this code. So first of all, MAT4 is a GLM type representing for the four-dimensional matrices. A matrix view is the matrix uh, initialized. Here, it will be automatically initialized as a identity matrix. So we have ones on the diagonal line and zeros everywhere else. And in terms of uh, transformation represented, representing, represented by the identity matrix, there is identity transformation, the transformation that does nothing. Okay. Then the second line, I use the rotate line as an example. Rotate is a GLM function, and this GLM function creates a rotation matrix. And how it uh, creates uh, this rotation matrix? First of all, uh, this uh, creates a, a combination of transforms. So uh, the result of this function will be the M matrix multiplied by the rotation matrix. So it takes existing uh, existing matrix and adds one more transformation on top of it in rotation in this case, all right? And now, how much you rotate, the rotation angle has to be given in radians. So if you provide it in uh, degrees, uh, conversion is mandatory. And then you get the axis of the, of the rotation. Quite often you will be using a 100 to have the X axis like this. So a rotation, rotation like uh, so the rotation like this. That's the rotation around the uh, x-axis. Or zero one zero, as in this example here. That's the rotation around the y-axis like this. And uh, finally zero zero one. That's the rotation about z-axis. Z-axis is this one. Okay. So the rotation will look like this. All right, but uh, from this syntax, you can uh, notice that uh, uh, these are just three examples of possible rotation axis. You can also uh, use any one and any, any other uh, rotation if you know it, this rotation, okay? So you can rotate object uh, like this, okay? This would be a rotation around an axis running like this. So it may be any kind of a diagonal diagonal axis as well. So it's very, very uh, flexible function. And this is how you will construct tra uh, transformations with GLM. This is another example, translate. Translate will do a similar thing. It will take the existing matrix M, translate it, and store uh, as a uh, result of this function. So the mathematical uh, 
procedure here is M equals M times translation matrix, and the translation matrix is, of course, translation by this vector minus 3, 0, 0. Uh, and it is based on VEC3, another GLM data type. GLM data types are easy, VEC2, VEC3, VEC4, MAT3, MAT4, MAT2 as well, okay? So it's it's quite intuitive. Uh, it's a very powerful library and it's uh, very intuitive. That's the reason why uh, programmers love this uh, uh, library. And of course, we have a scale. This is a uniform scale because all three coefficients are equal. Uh, now, I have to tell you that the example that you will start with today has still some deprecated uh, functionality. Um, among other things, because mostly because we are displaying a, a teapot, teapot from GLAD library. GLAD objects require a model view matrix setup and they are basically incompatible with uh, uh, GLM. So we need some wizardry here, which is uh, deprecated and which we will very soon stop using. Okay, we'll be using something more up to date. So uh, this application will still contain a few deprecated functions, just as a uh, reminder. Okay, that solid is uh, a solid teapot is in incompatible with GLM. With other objects, we don't see deprecated functions only because they are hidden inside the implementation of the render function. And actually, I've forgotten to tell you about the render function. So, sorry, I have to come back to this uh, to this uh, to this example. Uh, our example code to display an object apart from transformations also contains this final render function. This render function comes from another library, 3DGL, which I will introduce in a moment as well. And this is uh, the uh, library created for you to use in this module. Now, that's the scene you will be creating today. Uh, you will get all the uh, objects, uh, meshes. So uh, the teapot comes from uh, GLAD, but you will get a vase and a, a table and a chair, okay? And the chair you will have to multiply to make four chairs, okay? And uh, that's it. There are some uh, additional optional uh, elements of this of this uh, scene, but for now I propose to keep it simple, right? Uh, at least before uh, before you enter these shaders next week. All right. Other libraries we use apart from GLM. That's uh, the GLAD. Okay. We, uh, I introduced GLAD two weeks ago. It's a GL OpenGL utility toolkit. Many useful tools. Um, but GLAD is outdated. Not developed anymore. Uh, it was an abandoned uh, project. But people found it uh, very useful. Therefore, um, another group of programmers formed, created a copy of the same uh, library because GLAD was um, uh, closed. Uh, we didn't have, uh, uh, there was no access to GLAD source code. So, uh, free GLAD is uh, it's not a uh, free because it's a um, uh, free code. This is mostly because it's not blocked by the original creators of GLAD. So it's a GLAD made free and it's called free GLAD. It's identical to GLAD, apart from it's a, a slightly newer version. Uh, how to use GLAD in your program, you just need an include gl uh, slash GLAD .h. Uh, This character here doesn't look good. Uh, it should be a quotation mark, but a, a straight one, as in uh, programming code. We also use another library, GL Extension Wrangler, uh, which uh, not only has to be included uh, in the program, so you need to include GLEU glue. It's, uh, it's called glue, all right? But also uh, there is some simple initialization necessary. 
Uh, don't worry, when you download your first project, this initialization will be already there. And I actually never met a situation in which uh, this error would be generated and the program abandoned. Okay, so uh, Glue is quite a effective solution. Uh, Glue, very briefly speaking, you may remember that Microsoft dropped uh, support for OpenGL at version 1.1. So if you have a Windows installation on your computer, natively you only have OpenGL 1.1, which is very old, but uh, uh, OpenGL 1.1 was the first version to implement extensions. And extensions mean that uh, another guy, myself possibly, who produced your graphics card, created a set of drivers for your graphics card, and this graphics card also contains extension of the OpenGL, which is a specialized OpenGL version for your particular graphics card, which is nice. <coughs> Sorry. And which is Provided in much 4.7, perhaps, or for my card is 4.4, for example, on my private computer. Okay, so the version of OpenGL will depend on your graphics hardware rather than anything else. Uh, but uh, to use these extensions in OpenGL, it's quite tricky. It's a lot of programming to access any uh, piece of this extension unless you have a, a tricky magical library which makes things very easy. And this is Glue. This is what Glue is for. So Glue is absolutely transparent in use. Okay, You won't even know that you are using Glue. You will just be thinking, oh, I'm using um, OpenGL in version 4.4, 4.7, some advanced version. And this is thanks to the Glue library, which dynamically links your program to your graphic driver to provide you with the latest possible, the highest possible, not latest, the highest possible version of OpenGL. All right, but now I showed you the scene that you are going to create, and this was a table for chairs, a vase on top of this table. You need something to read 3D models, and uh, this is Asim. Now a uh, industry standard for OpenGL graphics uh, programmers. It imports 3D models from more than 40 file formats. It's a, it is not a part of OpenGL. Works equally well with DirectX, for example. Uh, and Asim doesn't provide OpenGL specific code. Okay. So uh, you would need some uh, additional coding to make it working with OpenGL, but actually you don't need to do anything else because you got a 3DGL, 3D graphics programming module library from me. Say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's the library I provide. Uh, it uh, includes Asim and everything that you need in order to work with ASIMP. So you will not even be aware that you are using ASIMP because it's a lower uh, uh, level. And um, it's uh, as easy as, uh, uh, you know, defining an object of the uh, C3DGL object class, loading this object from an external mesh file in any of the 40 uh, file formats provided or supported by ASIMP, OK, and then you can render these objects, all right? So it's uh, the graphics program made reasonably easy here. But you will have to do everything else. So what we have so far uh, from your first OpenGL program, uh, we, we've been using GLAT, OK? And we had functions like init, done, render, and reshape. And we'll more or less use the same functions now, but Additionally, we will have 3GL. 3GL will inter, uh, internally uh, include uh, 3GLAT. And now I have a problem because the next one here is Glee. And I'm not sure if we use uh, Glee or Glue. 
it doesn't matter too much because uh, Glee and Glue are two different libraries, updated by uh, two different group of groups of people, but they are basically doing the same thing. So both of them provide a fully transparent for you means to use the highest possible uh, version of OpenGL. So it doesn't matter, but I have no idea now if we are using Glee or Glue. Uh, sorry for that. We can check it uh, as, uh, as soon as we unpack the first uh, project. OK, we will be using a little bit of uh, standard namespace to uh, get STL, Standard Template Library in C++. And also we'll be using a namespace called 3DGL so that we can easily access all the, uh, all the uh, components of the 3DGL library. Um, and uh, there will be a little bit more uh, callback functions like on key down, on spec down, spec down is special key, so things like F1 and so on. Okay. And now what to look for in our new application? I will show you the, this uh, new application in a moment, probably after the break because we will have a break in a moment. So after the break, we will look at the uh, view matrix initialized in the init function, uh, then set up in the render function, and uh, another matrix, projection matrix, set up in the reshape function. Uh, we also have a keyboard and mouse handlers, uh, which uh, provide an elementary basic navigation. So you don't have to write a line of code because it's all there already. And you will have a, a simple navigation through WASD and mouse. So you can walk around, look around the scene, which is quite, uh, quite uh, practical, quite useful. And then there is a the model matrix modified for each model. Uh, yeah, so that's that's it for for now. It's uh, one o'clock, so I have propose ten minutes break. We'll meet at uh, ten past one, and then I will introduce uh, uh, the new 3D project for you. Thank you.